Good evening, folks. This is the Factivist Project Report for Sunday, the 28th of August, almost the end of the month. We're moving into the fall, but you'd never know it here because it's hotter than the blazes and we're getting sick of this shit. But without further ado, I'm turning this over to Dave. Okay, so I had the idea of splitting this up and talking about the Senate and then talking about the House and maybe at some point talking about some assembly races and some of the, you know, uh, some of the stuff going on in individual states. Uh, so I, because every single race, honestly, is important uh, down down to the school boards at this point, especially, as you know, in Florida. And we will get to Florida um, especially when it comes to House races, because Trump doubled and tripled down on the House, because it, probably because of the uh, connection to uh, DeSantis in there. So uh, there's a lot of stuff going on in Florida, as you know. Charlie, good. <laughs> Charlie Crist is, you know, is the uh, gubernatorial candidate. He actually. Um, as the lieutenant governor, he uh, uh, he picked a union, a teachers union person, which is a very smart move, and we'll see where it goes. But if you live in Florida, uh, uh, why wouldn't you vote for Charlie Chris? But with a, I, I, you know, just saying. Uh, without further ado, let me get this up here. So we're going to start talking about the Senate races. And let me just say that there are a bunch of factors that are running in favor of the Democrats right now. Number one, the Roe v. Wade decision happened right in time, right before the right before the election elections. And People are pissed and they should be pissed. And they also have seen where the Supreme Court is going to go with this uh, in terms of further rights, whether it be contraception, whether it be gay marriage or whatever. And you are starting to see the individual states put the hammer down before the election and people are responding to that and they should. As and well, they should. A lot of people in the GOP are apparently having buyer's remorse over pushing that issue. But you they know, absolutely they absolutely are. They made the fucking bed. Now they can lie in it. They actually are saying, you know, we had this because the economy is so bad and it's Biden's fault. You know what? Again, <laughs> that's bullshit. It's everybody's fault, by the way. Everybody has a hand in everything. You think Trump didn't have a hand in in screwing up the economy by screwing up the response to to COVID, or the Republicans? That's the billionaires, right? Adding Republic billions of dollars to the debt. Yep, billions. I'm saying trillions right. with a two. Okay. And on top of that, every single solitary. Uh, piece of aid that could possibly go to the the normal American people. I'm not talking about, you know, Tom Brady with his small uh, business loan or his, you know, coronavirus aid loan or whatever, PPP loan. I mean, come on. <laughs> and, and now all of the legislators, Marjorie Taylor Greene and all of these people bitching about the uh, the student debt forgiveness thing that Biden just did, where he, by the way, helped the people who need it the most, people making $75,000 and under, okay? The people who need it the most. All of these legislators, there's a whole list of them out there that got their PPP loans forgiven. And why did they even get fucking PPP loans? Right. Okay? Marjorie Taylor Greene got one for $183,000 because she has a bogus construction company. I'm sorry, folks. I don't want to hear from these people. Okay. I will. I will 
be very, you know, give you some personal information. I will probably get my student loan forgiven because I have been a federal employee for almost 25 years. And that is one of the things that they're they're looking to do to to, you know, give loan forgiveness to federal employees. So, hey, I'm going to take advantage of it like anybody else, because, you know, I'm I'm not a rich man, if you can tell behind behind me. It's you know, time I'm, to help the American people now. He and is. He so is. Tired of listening to these. Yep. People. But anyway, to to the Senate. So where am I? You're in New York. I'm here in Massachusetts. In case you didn't. So know. Deb Deb actually gave me this this article. This is uh, Jennifer Robin, and she's talking about some of the Senate races. Uh, Tim Ryan is running against J.D. Vance in, in Ohio, and yeah, Tim Ryan is for real. Trump's GOP Senate picks are in real trouble. Number one, the climate, the climate. Number two, Roe v. Wade. And number three, these these people are ridiculously bad uh, candidates. You have Mehmet Oz, who, who is a uh, snake oil salesman. You have uh, Herschel Walker, who can't put two two words together, two letters together. I'd be surprised if he could spell spell I. You know. And, I mean, by the way, he has now backed out of his debate. Um, right. <laughs> he's back. First, he told uh, first he told uh, his his uh, opponent to bring it on, and so his opponent did, <laughs> and now he's backing out of the debate because. There'll be supporters of his opponent in the room. That's not a debate. Well, yeah, actually, it is. Actually, it is. The way it fucking works. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so I'm going to read this a little bit. This is uh, Jennifer Rubin, who's one of uh, actually both Deb and one of my favorites as well. Uh, August 25th of this year. And by the and way, let me just tell you a little bit about Jennifer Rubin. She's a former Republican. Yeah. She has been an opinion writer for the Washington Post, which is not a Republican uh, publication uh, for a long time. She's excellent. She is like, I read her every single day. Without and by the way, by the way, before I get into it, Peter Thiel is a what billionaire. Yep. He, he is funding. He is funding some of these candidates. He's funding. Um, Blake Masters and he's funding uh, J.D. Vance. So, you know. Um, uh, let me just say one thing about Peter Thiel, okay? Yeah. Peter Thiel is the guy who used to sit on Facebook's board, but now he wants to destroy social media. Um, he has gone completely to the right. Uh, he also believes that freedom and democracy can't coexist. So... We have a really big problem here because if you look at his candidates, they all believe that as well. Yep. So I'm not going to read this whole thing, but the guys that I'm going to be covering, most of them are covered in this article. Uh, the contrast between Rep. Tim Ryan, the Democratic nominee for U.S. Senate in Ohio, and his opponent, Peter Thiel funded Trump critic turned sycophant J.D. Vance could not be more stark. And so far, this is bad news for Republicans in a state they should be winning by a mile. This is a Republican state, by the way. <laughs> uh, to review, Ryan is a blue collar native Ohioan, Ohioan running on kitchen table issues, which means domestic issues, and promising to return manufacturing to his state. Vance is a millionaire Yale Law School educated author and venture capitalist. It turns out he's also a rotten candidate. Republicans are in high panic over Vance's terrible fundraising, as well as his gaffes on abortion and domestic abuse. And I have them in here. Uh, Brian seems to like, like the only Democrat who might win the state, Vance might be the only Republican capable of losing it. So, um, 
changing the race from likely Republican to leans Republican. Okay, so that is from here to like here, <laughs> or from here to it, it, it's more towards unlikely or uh, more towards iffy, you right. know, 50 50. So, uh, there's some other, oh, here we go. Minority leader Mitch McConnell's Senate Leadership Fund is running a West rescue mission with a $28 million ad by a sign Republicans understand advances in trouble. By the way, one of the things that Mitch McConnell has said is all I care about is electability. He doesn't give a crap about where you stand on the issues. That's Mitch McConnell. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, McConnell, another guy who has to fucking go. One reason Vance may pay, face tough sledding is the post Dobbs phenomenon. Since the Dobbs decision on June 24th, women had out registered men by an 11 point margin. In 2018, new registrants were slightly more women than men, 0.75. And in 2020, there were more men, 1.5. So this is a huge issue, obviously, for women. It's a reproductive rights issue. And by the way, J.D. Vance is a moron when he talks about the rights of women. So. Right. GOP well, can only pluck. The guy that said that a woman's right to choose should be thrown on the trap trash heap of history. I believe that was him. So. Yeah, I, I have a couple others to <laughs> I'll get to in a minute. Uh, the, the GOP can only plug so many leaks in the dam. Senate candidates, and these are the ones I'm, I'm covering. Uh, Herschel Walker in Georgia, Mehmet Oz in Pennsylvania, Blake Mespers in Arizona, and Senator Ron Johnson in Wisconsin, who wants to sunset Medicare, to get greater Medicare, basically, and says he was only involved in the 2020 coup for a couple of seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I have that article, too. It's, it's, it's a glorious thing. He, 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 yeah, he, he admitted to wrongdoing. Uh, are all favorites of former President uh, Trump. All radically out of step with voters on abortion and all running cruddy campaigns. Republicans will have to choose whom to cut loose and whom to rescue. In all honesty, I think they are cutting all of them loose, <laughs> it looks I, like. I, I mean, Ron Johnson is... Um... Whoever's running against him on the Democratic side, when I looked last, he had a seven-point lead over Johnson. I, I say he's one of the key guys that has to go. Anybody yeah. who's out there talking about, you know, privatizing and, you know, making making so not just Medicare, Social Security and Medicare, moving them from non, uh, you know, non-essential funding to discretionary is fucking insane. There has been no Republican man who has ever, ever stated that in the middle of a campaign. That shows you how far they've gone, okay? Those yep. are things that should never be touched. People pay taxes to get those. They are that, not entitlements. That did hurt him. Uh, what I did, I, in all honesty, I only one, put one link for Johnson and that was him saying, you know, yeah, I killed him, but I only killed him for a second. You know, <laughs> didn't kill anybody, but he was involved in election fraud. Right. He was. He admitted to it. So. Roe v. Wade is a watershed issue in this election. As what a lot of people are, are keying on, especially the Democrats. And. Good. This is a losing issue for Republicans. Yes, it is, because they were the ones that pushed pushed the issue. Okay. While Republicans are publicly celebrating the overturn of Roe v. Wade, some are privately worrying that the timing could ne negatively impact the November elections. And by the way, this should negatively impact them in every single election. The way that these people are going to get elected or not elected, this is going to move their state policy closer to where we want it. 
towards back to reproductive rights. Right. Just so you know, this is not a conversation we want to have for public and strategist Don Thomas told Politico. We want to have a conversation about the economy. We want to have a conversation about Joe Biden and pretty much every anything else beside Roe. This is a losing issue for Republicans. And by the way, we can have a conversation about it, the economy, but it's tied to Roe. Right. Parenthood is expensive and you're forcing young girls to be parents when they're not ready. So, you know. So, although overturning Roe has been a key ambition for conservatives for decades, the majority of Americans believe abortion should be legal in all or certain circumstances, according to national polls from Pew and Gallup. Some Republicans worry that the ruling should shift the fo- could shift the focus away from the economy and inf- inflation, which has previously been a top issue for voters. Now, here's here's my here's my question, and I didn't. I'm going to focus on it in a separate show. What do people not get when when Republicans vote against? Economic relief bill after economic relief bill after economic relief bill, and then turn around and say the Democrats aren't doing anything about the economy. Right. And they were the ones that dereg or that deregulated the fossil fuel industry, by the way. They certainly did under Ronald so, Reagan. Yep. So what what do people not get? I'm not saying that and that, by the way. Yeah. The Democrats have suggested several times that they go back to regulating that industry. And every single time, the Republicans have refused to consider it. Yep. And by the way, if we have a, a large enough uh, majority, you think they're not going to bring it up again? They should bring it they, up again because industry will. needs to be regulated. Yep. So here we go. Republicans confront unexpected money slowdown. So here's here's what's happening. Because because the uh, overturning of Roe v. Wade happened, and it affects um, people, whether you're a Republican or whether you're a Democrat, guess what happened? The Republican individual donations slowed down. But the individual donations to Democrats ramped up. So now what's happening is that the Republicans have to rely more on billionaires and big guys than ever before, (laughs) like Peter Thiel. Dark Money Group helping bankrolled uh, super PAC spending on 2022 election. He just looks evil. And by the way, let me just say this to my brethren out there who bitch about, you know, the Democrats taking money. You know what? They don't take money like these guys. And by the way, this is blood money. They use blood money. They use this money to oppress people. Okay. That's what they're using donations for. Okay. So... Here are a couple of uh, quotes from J.D. Vance. (laughs) Okay, Ohioans are reading and watching J.D. Vance's radical views on the freedom to choose and hearing from Black leaders holding him accountable from comparing abortion to slavery. When, (laughs) When asked to explain his extreme comments, State House News Bureau's Joe Engel reported, Vance has not returned calls for comments. And in fact, Vance isn't speaking out in public forums in Ohio, in Ohio much these days. Probably been told <laughs> to shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Uh, the next one was, I believe this is a video, but I, I wanted to put it in there anyway. JD, hold on. J.D. Vance basically said that women should stay in violent relationships. Right. I'm like, (laughs) 
Yeah, yeah. So. We're not going to play that video because it's a pain in the ass on Zoom, but you need to watch this video. Yeah. It's I, only, I it's only five surprised. minutes. All right. So. It's only five minutes. So uh, there are a couple of these um, talking about why the Democrats have, have such a, uh, you know, have such a chance here. Um, the nomination of several controversial Republican candidates, which I just mentioned, um, and the Republicans only needed to flip one seat. But uh, the, another thing that they did mention is that Democrats have the benefit of a favorable Senate map this year. They're not defending any seats in as states carried by Trump in 2020. So, um, and on top of that, uh, Republicans couldn't recruit any uh, top candidates like Doug Ducey or Chris Sununu of New Hampshire, who just, I think he's just re retiring. No, he's he not. He's actually going to run again. He, he's, oh, he is. He said he's not interested in the Senate. Okay. Um, because he is not interested in simply spending two years handcuffing Joe Biden because that's really what it's all about. And he, right. he wants to do do stuff for people. That's right. basically what he said. Not that I like Chris Sununu, but he had a hell of a lot of a better chance winning, you know, in the Senate than he did, you know, than, he, than uh, some of these other people. Right, right. He's not interested in playing this particular version of the GOP's game is basically what he said. Right. And Doug Ducey is out because there are term limits. Right. Now, uh, run again. So now we got Carrie, Carrie Nutbag out there in Arizona. <laughs> right, right. Carrie Lake. <laughs> but uh, so we have Herschel Walker uh, hiding the existence of two children, acknowledged his abuse, but said he was suffering from mental illness at the time. It wasn't. What what was oh he put a band aid on he it. Put so a band aid okay. on. Yeah, he went to therapy. He's all better now. <laughs> Until those two girls came out and said that he abused right. them as girlfriends after his wife. So you know. And there are several things with uh, with uh, Doctor Oz too. You know some of the some of the quackery that he's done, um, and him claim you know his longtime residency in New Jersey before deciding to run for office. They, uh, Fetterman did a little thing with uh, Snooky there. <laughs> By the way, he well, did use his mother-in-law's address to register. He's since bought yeah. a house there. Uh, right. But he also has a mansion in uh, Miami or in Florida somewhere where they just gave him a major tax cut. Uh, they don't charge him any taxes. He just had right. his house expanded. He's, he's you know... He's exactly what you would expect. He's a doctor who is a legitimate doctor, pretty good thoracic surgeon from what I know, who basically made more money peddling snake oil than he did as a surgeon. You know, so well, that, yeah. he doesn't do that anymore. There's an article in here. They, they're looking to strip him of his license because of some of the dubious things that he's sold in the past. Now, and yeah, also, he, he actually encouraged Donald Trump to buy massive amounts of hydroxychloroquine uh, during the pandemic. Yep, he did. Fucking doctor, he knows that shit doesn't work. Yep. So, all right. Come on. And this by is the going... way, Warnock is in the lead over... Uh, I, I would I would lose my faith in humanity if he wasn't. <laughs> I, I, I can't even understand how people could possibly put Herschel Walker in over over fucking Raphael Warnock. I mean, Herschel Walker can't even string together a fucking sentence. He has no idea what the issues are. He can't even he doesn't even understand global warming. Right. You know? So okay. Let me see if I can, there we go. So this is an article from The Independent and it's listing, I, I already did J.D. Vance and there was another person I want to mention, you know, at the end, but 
Uh, here are five, five Senate seats most likely to flip. Most of these I've already mentioned, but we have Dr. Oz, uh, we have Adam Laxalt, and I know uh, Deb has mentioned uh, Catherine Cortez Mastow several times. Yep. So we have Raphael Warnock, or, uh, you know, with uh, Herschel Walker there. And we have Ron Johnson, and we have Blake Masters. Okay, so let's go through them uh, just very briefly, one by one. Uh, Fetterman, right now, as of, well, August 27th, again, with, with polls, they generally have a plus or minus 4% range. Right now, Fetterman is ahead by about 13 points. Of Dr. Oz. Good cream of and uh, <laughs> we we have um, uh, Mitch McConnell basically saying that it's it's he's questioning the strength of the candidates, and it was a big you know like kerfuffle. And Oz is like, I'm not one of them. Yeah, actually, you are. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, even Trump is trying to distance himself from from Oz at this point. Uh, so <laughs> Trump went off the fucking chain over Dr. Oz, as far as I know. Yeah, I know. Um, so John Fetterman is lieutenant governor. They ha uh, the right wing has gone off the rails a little bit about his stroke, saying that he's unfit. Blah blah blah. He's he's okay. Okay, number one. Uh, one of the things, as I said, one of the things that uh, John Fetterman did was that little uh, was that little uh, video welcoming us back to Jersey. I thought that was fun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so um, Fetterman had uh, forty three percent amongst registered voters in uh, Pennsylvania. Oz thirty percent. Fetterman is performing well with Democratic voters, earning 76% of their support. Uh, Oz's support amongst Republicans is 62. So, and he needs more if he's going to win. And I, I think they're cutting Oz loose, to be honest. So I know that they're they're not going to spend any major money on him. I, I, no, I, they're not. I, yep. Uh, when respondents were asked which candidate they would likely end up supporting, uh, Fe uh, Fetterman was leading by nine points. So you need you need the undecideds at this point. Independence again, backing Fetterman by thirty four to seventeen percent. Oz. Uh, he his former television personality, which is what people most people know him for. Fifty seven uh, percent viewed that negatively. Only twenty seven percent gave him positive marks. And I, I would so, encourage everybody just, you know, for some comic relief to watch Sean Oliver's video. Um, that he did from several years ago on Dr. Ross peddling supplements because it, it was just brilliant. I, I, I just can't even, I, I can't even tell you. I, I might even stick it in so you can see it. So Deb, Deb actually mentioned to me off camera that uh, there are several um, scientists and doctors and people in the medical or scientific field that are starting to run yep. for office. Um, Dr. Oz probably isn't listed as one of them because the Scientific American is saying Dr. Oz shouldn't be a senator or a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> His brand of misinformation has already tarnished medicine in the halls of Congress. He'd do much worse. Yep. So it's basically, you know, what we've mentioned before. Um, hydrochloric chlorine, 
um, touting as it as it as it's being beneficial in the treatment or prevention of COVID, which has been debunked. And he's he's a supplement salesman, all all this kind of stuff. So you know, the stuff that was the worst was was all his uh, his diet stuff. All that yeah. stuff he was peddling to people. That's just ridiculous. You know, it was a new thing every month. You know, it was like one month he was selling this and then he moved on to raspberry something or other. And you know, it, it's like, it's, it was like, a man, I still get his emails and right. he's out there telling people he doesn't put his name on anything. He's fucking blatantly lying. I get emails with his name on it. <laughs> yeah. So next is Adam Laxall. Democrat Catherine Cortez Masto's Masto opens up a lead against Adam Laxall. So this is Nevada. And voters are saying inflation and the economy are the most important issues. Um, and that right now she has a 45 to 38% lead. And that's with 12% undecided. So it's still an undecided race. And by the way, the one thing about Nevada is that 60%, over 60% of Nevada voters believe that Roe v. Wade should not have been overturned. Reproductive right. rights are really important in Nevada. So there's something I found. Democratic PAC, and again, they're making they're making a claim, says Nevada state candidate. Adam Laxalt violated campaign finance law. So basically, uh, this is this is the crux of it in the first paragraph by Gabe Stern of the Associated Press. The Associated Press, okay, they're not going to play around. They're not going to publish no. something that isn't true. August 22nd, a political action committee backing Democratic candidates filed a complaint Friday alleging that Nevada Republican Senate candidate Adam Laxalt violated campaign finance laws by using an annual GOP cookout to promote his campaign while he was president of the PAC that organized it. <laughs> nice touch. <laughs> yeah. Now, okay. He knew nothing about it, right? All right, hold on. The Bax Fry is run by uh, the Morning in Nevada PAC, which Laxalt was president of until August 2021, when his candidacy for U.S. Senate was announced. By allegedly controlling a state PAC as a federal candidate, he violated FEC guidelines, said it end Citizens United in its complaint. So Laxalt's campaign said that he had nothing to do with the PAC after he announced his candidacy a day after last year's event. The cookout. Which, this is great. The cookout, which includes live music, an inflatable rodeo ride, <laughs> and bass cuisine, is modeled after Adam Laxalt's grandfather and former Nevada Governor Paul Laxalt's uh, cookouts. <laughs> great. I'm just saying, I just think he knew nothing about it, but it's modeled after his grandfather's cookouts. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Huh. Sure, he didn't. Oh, so, okay. So the next one is Herschel Walker. And you, because you know that the most pressing issues in Georgia are dogs and trees. <laughs> I, I can't. Know. I can't even. I, I just, I can't. I just can't even. I, I read about this guy every day and I just scratch my head. So, and, and you know, I know, I know Trump, you know, latched on to him because, hey, he's a foot, he's a, he's a famous football guy in Georgia, played for the Georgia Bulldogs, whatever, you know, you know, was it, was it? He guy? also played for, he played for the Washington Generals on Donald Trump's right. USFL team. So right. he knew him. Right. He knows how intelligent or lack of intelligence he so, is. Uh, um, uh, I, I, you know, he's a fucking moron. I don't even know where to go with this. I can't call back. But that fact check. 
Herschel Walker falsely claims Raphael Warnock lied about having a dog. Is that all you got? <laughs> I. That's a major issue. Raphael Warnock used a dog in a political ad as a joke, never saying that it was his dog. And and Herschel, yeah, he lost it. For further comedy relief, guys, take a look at this. I'm not gonna read it. It's just it's amazing. I, I just it's better as you don't for, want. For, for CNN to do a fact check, the guy, Daniel Dale, is going to his editor going, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? So he's like, okay. All right. This, so, this is the best. All right. Well, what the? Dude, come on. Oh, it's just, right. I don't know. I have the post, but I can't log in from here. I, I, I know. I have the post. I have the post. It's stop it. Oh, whatever. Here, here's here's the crux of it. There we go. When criticizing climate law, asks, don't we have enough trees around here? There you we go. have plenty of trees. Yeah. You know, he was actually criticizing uh, the climate bill. And he said that a lot of the money was going to trees and don't we have enough trees around here? <laughs> Dear God in heaven. This is crazy. And for whatever reason, I wasn't going to read the whole article anyway, Washington Post, but Washington Post, you can check. I have a subscription. I haven't canceled it. I have it. I don't know what the, yeah. But I don't have it I'll to put, you. I'll put mine in because I, 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 uh, Right. I'm good. Ron, Ron Johnson now admits he was part of the fake electric scheme, but the senator from Wisconsin says it's cool because he only participated in the seditious conspiracy for a couple of seconds. <laughs> I, uh, he's trying to get rid of Medicare. He's trying to get rid of Social Security. You need yep. you got to vote this guy out. Yeah, it, yeah, because you know what? Again, this is part of the GOP's claim about socialism. They don't even understand what socialism actually is. This is not socialism, okay? And they don't even understand what communism is. They use the two words interchangeably. They're morons. So who, what's the name of the person running against uh, Ron Johnson? That's what I'm looking for. I got it somewhere. It may be, it may be that I can't, uh, maybe that I don't, I might have to have my, I don't have the, the website up, but that's where it all is. Okay. But remember his name. Guys, if you live in Wisconsin, I'll look it up. Vote against Ron Johnson because he does not have your best interest. But, but I will tell you this, whoever it is has a seven point lead on him right now. Yeah, they do. I, I can tell you that because I just read that article. Okay, so this this next candidate, we may get some pushback on this candidate, and we understand this candidate is a former Republican turned independent, but you have to understand what state this candidate is in and where the Democrats are going with this. The Democrats are actually, in my opinion, in my informed opinion, they are very smart in backing this guy because you are breaking up a potential powerhouse in a, in a state that is Republican. In a state that you have no, you have no, no chance in. You have no leverage whatsoever. We're talking about Utah. Utah. You know, there is, there are no, if, I don't, I don't, I don't know when the last time I ever saw a Democratic candidate running in the state of fucking Utah. I, I don't know. So the last guy who was a as was a senator in Utah and was a Democrat. I think it was 1978. They said. Yeah. 
I mean, remember, remember how long Orrin Hatch was in, in, in installed? Now we've got Mike Lee. And Mike Lee, he was also part of Stop the Steal. So, you know, if we can get Mike Lee out of that state, you know what? I'll take it. We're looking at fascism here, folks. I mean, this is not a joke. Anyone who thinks this is a drill or, you know, if the same people who were saying back in 2016 that Roe v. Wade was just a distraction by the Democrats, you know what? It wasn't a distraction. We're here right now and we're telling you, take a fucking look. That was the distraction? I don't think so. That I'm was a real... The plan. We'll read a little bit of this. This is very recent from 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 yesterday, actually. Uh, this is a USA Today story. Philip M. Bailey, uh, the anti-Trump. Can Evan McMullen's underdog bid in Utah determine control of the Senate? I am not saying that this man is the cure for anything. He is, for all intents and purposes, still a Republican. He will he says, and based on his voting record, he will uh, agree with some things in regards to gun control and regards to infrastructure, but he's a Republican for the most part, but he's breaking from the Republican Party and he's become an independent and, and the uh, Democratic Party in Utah has basically said Listen, number one, it can muddy the waters. You know, if, if it's that close, he could actually help with, you know, with certain votes, uh, number one. You'll at least be able to talk to him and he'll, he might listen to you as opposed to Mike Lee. You know he's, uh, Mike Lee's not going to listen to you. So um, I've looked at this guy's at this guy's website and stuff. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> but at the same time, I understand. And I, I applaud the Democrats doing this. You got to move forward. You got to, you know, you, you're going nowhere in Utah. So this is a step, small step, but a step. And, and by the way, this guy is absolutely right. It is whether you believe in objective truth, whether you believe in democracy or not. We've got to realize that as soon as possible in order to preserve a future for our republic, and this is what this campaign is about. This is absolutely, absolutely right. We are in real danger in this country. I, I'm not sure that everybody gets that yet, but you better get it. Because while I understand that Roe v. Wade is the driving force, there are many things that should be the driving force for the Democrats in this, okay? Right. Now... I also understand that this uh, gentleman is a uh, former CIA officer. Okay, I know that. Um, the last time a Democrat was a, a senator in Utah was 1977. Just saying. And it's the first competitive Senate contest in half a, half a century. Okay. Let's try to break this state. Let's let's remember that this was the state, by the way, who sent people to live in Massachusetts to try to turn Massachusetts more conservative. This was a state that sent Mitt Romney here to be the governor. This was the state who said incentivized people from Utah to come here and they built a fucking temple. On off of, right off of 128 that I used to look at every day, they, they literally incentivized Mormons to come and move into Massachusetts to try to make it conservative. Yep. You know, this is not uncommon here. And by the way, Mitt Romney refused to endorse Mike Lee. Right. Which helps him. Didn't endorse um, this guy either, McMullen but didn't endorse Lee, and that opens the door. And by the way, he didn't endorse Lee because Lee is an election denier. Right. So um, here we go. It's a conservative state, but the idea of republicanism in Utah is a little bit different because it hasn't followed some of the trends of the other red states where they follow Trumpism. 
said a political research, researcher at the University of New Haven, Trish Krause. So it opens the door for somebody like Evan McMullen to win if he runs a good enough campaign. So, so we'll see, you know, he's, he's running, by the way, Mormons have a big, huge part in this whole thing. And uh, what the article is saying is that Mormons are hard to uh, predict. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, one thing I will say, as I said, he will, he will help the Democrats when it comes to infrastructure bills, maybe even a spending bill or two. Uh, but he is still a Republican. Um, he did state that he wanted Roe v. Wade overturned in 2016, I believe it was. Um, and there's a Deseret News article that I have here uh, talking about it. Now, he has softened his stance, of course, seeing how people are reacting to the whole thing. Right. Okay. Where does he stand on abortion? He, listen, he, he's saying, you know, he, he wants, he wants, quote unquote, what is it, like rational, like anybody who gets raped, no. You know, I mean, it's like, he's, he's not going that, that radical. If Roe v. Wade is overturned, some states will immediately en enact extreme laws such as total bans on abortion, onerous limits on birth control, and criminalization of women in desperate situations. I oppose these laws. Okay. Um, the bottom line is here that nothing is, <laughs> there's a lot of moving parts to any election, but. Yep. This particular election, there are more moving parts than there ever have been in this country at any one time. And we have a choice here, okay? <clears throat> we need to try to move out as many Trump people as we can. That is absolutely critical. You know, I, I'm, I like I said, I, I agree with uh, Liz Cheney on absolutely fucking not one issue, not one. Right. But I do agree with her on her position on where democracy is in America right now. And she's absolutely 100% correct. And I respect the fact that she basically gave up her political career to fight this. And I would imagine that if it was an open primary and you lived in Wyoming, you probably would have voted for Cheney in the primary. If I had a choice between Cheney and the nutbag that Donald Trump endorsed, Harriet Hageman, yeah, yeah, I would definitely have voted for Liz Cheney. But that, I mean, I that's would have voted for the Democrat to beat her ass. But that's me, right? Of course. <laughs> but this guy, I mean, as I'm saying, he is not he is not your um, your savior by any stretch of the imagination. But he's a move. Yep. Okay. He's a move forward in a in an extremely immovable state. And, and keep in mind that 30% of Utah voters are unaffiliated. Yep. That's big. That's a big percentage. Yep. There are more unaffiliated uh, voters than there are Democratic voters. Right. That's, <laughs> That's so I, I believe that the Democratic Party in Utah, they, they understand where they're at. Yep. And this is a move that they could make. So that this is what I have for now. I, I will say that I am going to be looking at, at there are a lot more moving parts in the House than there are the Senate because there's simply more races. Every single every single later in the House is up for election. Okay. On top of that, you have new districts. You have gerrymandered districts, you have expanded districts, you have contracted districts, you have all sorts of movement everywhere. Right. So uh, it's, it's very, um, it's very complex. And, and by the way, I'm working on the website right now. Um, I already have all of the Senate races covered on that website. I already have the governor races covered. I'm working on the House. And I am actually working on 
Secretary of State and Attorney General because there are Trump people running for those positions so that they can control the voting. That is the overall plan here, okay? The Republicans know they can't win legitimate elections anymore, but it's so much easier to just own the tabulation process than it is to try to change it after it's all done. This is exactly what's going on here. None of this is about election integrity. It's about election manipulation. So I will have uh, the website back up tomorrow night sometime. I'm going to continue to work on it tonight uh, and during the day tomorrow. I don't I'm know. Working, so I don't know how long. I mean, this will take forever, but I think it's important, at least in a few states, um, assembly members as well, yep. or council or whatever. Um, the state uh, in Florida, in Arizona, and there's a, there's a couple others, maybe Texas. Yeah, I, these to root these people out. Okay, maybe not even this election. But we need to expose these people. I didn't know that one assembly woman existed in Arizona. The crazy one. I can't remember her name right this second. Remember uh, the one involved with the um, Groypers? Oh, right. I, I can't remember her name either. But yeah, the one involved with Nick, Nick Fuentes. Nick Fuentes, yeah. Yep. yep. Uh, because look, and, and look at what we're looking at in in uh, in Florida, Laura Luma, right wing activist and Islamophobe, lost. Okay, and she's refusing to concede. She lost to a member of her own party, and she's claiming election fraud. This is what's going to happen all throughout this process. I promise you, the GOP is going to claim election fraud every single time they lose. People better be ready for this. We and by the way, cultivating candidates at the local level so they can move up through the system because they, these people are hell bent on taking back power and then retaining it. Okay. By the way, pay attention to these people too and pay attention to their progress as they run in election after election after election, see if they're gaining ground. Laura Loomer, from if I if I remember correctly, she lost by six points. That's insane. Right. Okay. And, For she, her, yes, and that's Florida. She, lost, she ran before she lost by more. Okay. That's what I'm saying. She's gaining ground now. That's yep. scary. Yep. Eventually she might get in. Do you really want Laura Loomer in office? in your state if you live in Florida. No, you don't. The, the, the bottom line is a lot of these people are also not qualified to run for public office. It's, right. not just the, it's not just the fact that she's an open Islamophobe, okay? It's that she is a fucking commentator. She has no political knowledge. She has no political knowledge about what the state of Florida needs, okay? All she knows is that she is an election denier, an Islamophobe, and she loves Donald Trump. You know, th th that's what she's got going for her. Is that enough for you? Because, honey, that would be enough for me to just completely turn her the fuck off. Back when, back when Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez won, we said she wasn't qualified because she basically, you know, ran in a contest. You know what I mean? If she's not qualified, which, by the way, right now, right now she's doing the job. Right. She knows what she's doing. She's doing the job. She learned it, whether she was qualified in the beginning. She's doing it now. But if she wasn't qualified when she got elected, these people sure as hell aren't. You have Tudor Dixon. You have Carrie Lake, both on TV as talking heads. Okay. What? Why? And by the way, Mehmet Oz, okay, again, on TV. Donald Trump, a reality TV show host. That's all he's ever been, okay? Right. Besides a bad businessman and a criminal. Um, but quite frankly, back to uh, Alexander Ocasio-Cortez as well, some of that shit that we spouted was made up to, just so we everybody- Yeah, I know. Okay. 
I we, know. You know what we, we you know we we've fallen on our sword a lot, okay, <laughs> <laughs> and we'll continue to fall on it because we're not afraid to say that we were wrong, and we were. We actually were wrong, and you know she she actually, if I remember correctly, she did go to school. I I don't know if what her degree was. It might have been political science, but I believe she was also in a um, in a program. Uh, if I if if that's the right person, you know, talking about politics and and change and being an activist and all that stuff. So, and, and you know what? By the way, absolutely evident now that Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, Elon Omar, Rashida Tlaib, and um, I can never remember the woman from Massachusetts. If you can believe this, I, I don't know why. Uh, Ayana. Ayana, Ayana Presley. Presley. You are, we are absolutely right. They were put in there to help move the Democrats more to the left. And that's the goal. And, and I support that goal 100%, okay? So I get that. And, and that's, that's part of a long-term strategy within a party, okay? But do I believe we should go all the way to the left? You know what? We need to serve all of the people, okay? What the, Dem what the Republicans have done is move that party all the way to the right, okay? Yep. And you know what? We got to have some kind of balance so that everybody is represented. That's part of part of uh, you know part of what government is. And there's also people out there saying that we need more parties. And you know what? That might be a goal down the road. But you know, we also need to understand that once you have that kind of a situation where you have multiple parties, what you're moving towards is a coalition government. Because yeah. that, that's exactly what you have to be willing to accept. All right. You know, if you're thinking you want more parties in there just so a new party can win and then become dominant, that's not the goal of multiple parties. Okay. That's not the way that works. So I will I will be doing a little bit more, maybe, maybe after the elections. I, I wanna I wanna look more into you know where I'm going, uh, the working families party, because it's different. It's looking for progressive candidates, and sometimes it runs with Democrats. Right. Um, it, it's just trying to trying to move the needle a little bit. Um, it's not trying to become its own party. It's trying to push. It, it's a it's a candidate and issues based um, movement rather than preserving its own party, which right. I actually. I admire and I will probably volunteer for them a little bit. Uh, but I agree with you. I, there's no need for another party. The nope. problem with parties is that there's one of their sole goals is the continuation of the party. And that does not help the American people. No. Nope. And by the way, this nonsense with Andrew Yang. Oh, we're know, gonna get there. And his forward party. You know what? Don't fall for that bullshit, because any guy who is willing to invite people from the extreme right in, I'm sorry, they're not looking for change. He's no, not. to build his brand. OK, he is a climber and that's all he has ever been. Is Thiel part of that? Huh? Is Peter Thiel part of the Ford Party thing? I don't really know. But all I know is that. Um, uh, Andrew Yang is a featured speaker at Freedom Fest, and Freedom oh, Fest well. is a far right wing fucking event. Okay, so anytime you think you can have a party with far right wingers and far left wingers together, you can forget that shit. Okay, yeah, it's they not gonna work. <laughs> okay, he's a waste of space. Yeah. So that's what we got for this week, kids, and. Uh, we're going to close out the recording now so we don't continue to talk and make this thing three hours long. This this recording never happened. I'm denying history. Watch the short show and you'll know what I'm talking about. Bye, guys. The short show, by the way, will be up tonight. Yeah.